Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. What's up, alibiers? Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi Fruit Loop. What you know? Did you know that square watermelons cost more than round ones? We'll go figure. Yeah, so a square watermelon, wherever you can buy those, can be bought for eighty five dollars. Wow! I would not pay eighty five dollars for a square watermelon. Heck no! I would pay. Do you you remember when we went to Disney and you do that uh, living with the land and they have like the pumpkins that are in Mickey shape and stuff? Yes, I pay eighty bucks for that, but not a square watermelon. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, supposed to fit in your fridge better or something. Well, I mean, it does make sense. Yeah. But 85 bucks, I'll chop that baby up and put it in some Ziplocs and it'll fit just fine. Faux show. What? Uh, so, awesome job last week on that Wagner rebroadcast. You rocked it. Thank you for letting me take a few days just to clear my mind and, um, and yeah, chill. Was, just chill. It was so nice. It was fun. Everybody seemed to enjoy it. We got a lot of comments and stuff on it. Well, People yeah. People forgotten things and some of them hadn't even heard it, so... Yeah, and I have to give a big shout out to Allison, who I met on the beach. One of our listeners loves the show. Super cool lady. We had a great 30-minute talk about cases, stuff not case-related. And it's just, you know, really awesome to find that we have listeners all over. It's a trip. She's amazing. I hope to see her again in October when I go back. Uh, thank you to Diane, one of our listeners. She sent me some really cool Elvis stuff. She sent oh, a, awesome. a replica of Graceland and two Elvis dolls that are still in the package. And I'm going to put a shelf in here and display them. So thank you. It meant a lot. Uh, my aunt loved Elvis. Today was her birthday. We just got back from uh, the graveyard, all of us. And so it, it really made my day to get that stuff. Cool. What? You know, and, and then you think about it today, three years since Charles Valley was murdered. Yep. Just so thinking about Kay and Larry and the whole crew down there. Has to be, you know, anniversaries are hard. And yep. especially when uh, somebody goes like that. Yeah. So anyways, we're going to jump back in. We are starting to get really into this timeline now. We kind of have moved past Chad's blog posts. Thank uh, goodness. I know, right? <laughs> a, cu- a couple of times I will grab interviews that happened after the kids were found and plug in information. So like in the beginning here, we're going to talk about some things Melanie Gibb told investigators in 2021 that sort of explain things that come in later. So we're going to do that. But why don't you start off, Fruit Loop? All right. So April 3rd, 2018, uh, Joe Ryan is found dead in his apartment. Uh, his death is ruled as natural. He had been deceased for some time and was only found when a neighbor noticed a smell coming from his apartment. I think his dog or something alerted Mm -hmm. to it or something. Uh, He was cremated. Uh, They collected samples from his liver and thigh muscle and kept those for toxicology testing. His death was revisited after the kids went missing, but again, it was ruled as natural. Um, Lori was still listed as his next of kin and was told 10 days later of his death. Uh, Lori didn't notify his sister Annie or anyone in his family of his death. It wasn't until a background check was done on Joe and they notified his brother. Annie told KSL TV she learned about it five weeks later. An obituary posted by the Arizona Republic said... If you have any information regarding this person, please call Legacy Funeral Home. That is so sad. Yeah. It's sad that Lori knew about it and didn't didn't share it. Uh, But, you know, here's my question. Is that she told somebody in Hawaii, I believe April Raymond, that her and Tylee came in and found Joe? Yeah, I know it was something. Yeah. uh, And I, I think there was something with some photo albums. Uh, that Annie made a comment about. Uh, if you remember, um, I'm it's kind of about some photo albums that Lori had that had Tylee in them and stuff. I remember it was something about those uh, 
Yeah. And we're going to post the link in the description of the podcast and on YouTube to this interview with uh, Joe's sister, Annie, who has Annie Lytics, which is an amazing reference for this case. Her timeline is like no other. Yeah. So Lori told a family member that Joe was evil and that God took care of him. She admitted to someone that she did get a life insurance payout from his death and said she is going to share it with Tylee. I find that hard to believe, but (laughs) authorities released photos of Joe's apartment after his death. Every picture on the shelves in his apartment had Tylee in them. Uh, There was a double deadbolt on the door, which we think is just weird. Yeah. Um, It's almost like he had some paranoia or something. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, Alex, Alex tased him and I think he probably, you know, he moved to be closer to Tylee, but in doing that, he moved closer to the people. Yeah. Wanted him dead. Bless his heart. And if you remember right, the attorney, uh, one of the attorneys said that he thought somebody went through his apartment or either it was, oh, it may have been, um, oh, good grief. His name just left me. Um, Guardian at Lightham, uh, Tom Ware. Tom Ware, I couldn't think. Remember no. we went over that. Yeah, Tom Ware was in Texas. He died in Arizona. Yeah, but so. remember, I'm saying that, remember that what we talked about, uh, he oh. shared that somebody had, he thought somebody had went through his stuff at his apartment. Well, and if you remember, and it's right here in the notes, there was a, a pair of women's sunglasses mm-hmm. on that bathroom sink, and I've always thought, you know, yeah. whose was that? Yeah. Uh, so Joe had workout equipment and a blood pressure cuff was seen. It looks like he had been cooking shortly before his death. Uh, the apartment was bare. Uh, he had basic necessities. And then what we just talked about, the lady sunglasses. There was a living sober book on the floor and the power of now a guide to spiritual enlightenment. Yeah. So, you know, we saw that last picture of Joe Ryan from his license and he looked very unhealthy and, you know, I understand completely, but it looked like, you know, he was trying to do the right thing and, and get, get, uh, get back on the right track, I guess. Yeah. Now, one question that I had, which was, did Tylee ever reconnect with her dad? So I reached out, and this is not a fact because I can't personally verify it, but this person whose daughter um, was a friend of Tylee's said that when Tylee was living in Hawaii, apparently she did talk to Joe and brought up what was said happened to Colby. And according to this person, she believes that may have been around the last time Tylee talked to him. Like wow. it was not a pleasant conversation. Hmm. Um, so May 2018, Lori invites Joe's sister, which is Tylee's aunt, Annie Cushing, to visit Tylee. And during the visit, Annie, I mean, just like Joe, she had Lori pegged to a T. Uh, KSL TV reported that after the visit, Annie texted her daughter. It was absolutely exhausting. I dealt with so many lies, even with little things. I think Lori's unhinged and untethered from truth, and Lolo was crazy. I saw a dark side of her when I was there that makes me question some of her claims, and I regret going down there. She may be a sociopath, and way more. That's what makes me feel Lori was a sociopath. To her, this was all a game. She had no empathy for the suffering anyone else was experiencing, including Tylee. Annie also saw Lori obsessing about the end times, saying, it's like she wanted me to be afraid of the end times. She said there was one time when Lori was talking about it, and she says, sometimes I think it would be better just to put my kids in a car and go off the side of a cliff. We've heard that several times before. She noticed that the relationship between Tylee and Lori was tense, and she also felt that Tylee was being discouraged from mourning the loss of her dad. And unfortunately, this was the last time Annie saw Tylee. I think at one point, Annie had mentioned in an interview that she had maybe said, hey, come visit me in New York or something, you know, like she really wanted to maintain a relationship. But, you know, Lori, she wasn't going to make that that easy. Yeah. So you pick up here, June 2018. So June 2018, uh, Chad finishes his book, Times of Turmoil. 
and said on his blog that he felt prompted to talk about it in July in Arizona. Uh, he contacts Melanie Gibb and she sets up a speaking event with Chad and another person. Uh, June 27, 2018, Chad posts on his blog, My novel Reclaiming Liberty is now available. It is the fourth and final volume in the Times of Turmoil series. Uh, we will be holding a book signing Saturday, June 30th from 11 to 1 at Central Elementary School. Uh, my friend Julie Rowe will also be signing copies of her new autobiography, Rising Above the Flames. Um, come join us. So July 13, 2018, an insider on Web Sleuth said Chad spoke at an event in Mesa, Arizona, and has a book signing after. Uh, September 2018, Chad begins on a podcast called Glimpses Through the Veil. September 15, 2018, Chad is in Brigham City, Utah, speaking at a prepper event. Uh, September 21st, 2018, Lori meets Jason Mao in the celestial room of the temple. He wants her to meet Melanie Gibb. Uh, September 24th, 2017, Lori posts 10 photos of Tylee on Instagram. The photos include three of Tylee alone, three with Tylee and JJ, and two of Tylee and Colby. Uh, one current and one of them is babies, uh, one with Tylee and her best friend, and one with Tylee and Lori on the beach. The caption says, beautiful daughter turned 15 today. Happy birthday, Tata. I love you so much. JJ says, Tylee Ryan Perry High School. She puts three lip, the three lip emoji deal thing. Mm -hmm. September 24, 2018, Tylee's 16th birthday and her last. She would be dead by the time her next birthday would be celebrated. Jesus. Uh, October 1st, Lori emails Jason Mile about speaking with the youth at her church. Hi, Jason. This is Lori Vallow. We met in the Celestial Room on September 21st. I've read and really enjoyed two of your books since then. I just love Morona so much. I'm not good at social media, so I was just going to give you my number and email so that if you feel inspired to put me into contact with some like-minded people, I would love that. And then some of us redacted. I did talk to my bishop about having you come speak to our youth, and he said he would love that. So Jason responds, thank you for the kind words. I will pass your info along to a lady named Melanie, who is the point of contact for a lot of the stuff we do. Also, you and Nicole might want to check out this website. It's preparingapeople.com. There's a big expo in November in Mesa for like-minded people, and you all should come. Great speakers and events. Now, going through the documents, investigators note that they don't think Jason Mao is involved, but more of Lori being a follower and kind of holding him in high regard. So April 1st, 2018, Lori makes her last Instagram post for Colby's birthday. There are a few of Colby alone um, as a baby, as an adult, one with Colby and his wife, one with him and Tylee as little kids with Lori. It's a super cute picture of Colby and Tylee. And one with JJ and then one of Lori and Colby taken in Hawaii. And so I put the next heading here. And so it begins because this is when we get to the point to where Chad and Lori meet. You know, you think about it at this point, a year later, four people are going to be dead. That yep. is a lot of people. Yep. So on October 3rd, 2018, Zulema tells Lori she was told by God that she is to protect Lori. Then on October 4th, 2018, Lori meets Melanie Gibb. And I'm referring back to this interview in April of 2021 for some of this information. Gibb tells, and I'm just going to say Gibb because Melanie gets confusing, even though we use Melanie's. Gibb tells authorities in April 2021 that Lori came up to her and was excited to meet her. They talked about their change of heart with God, and Melanie Gibb thought, or Gibb thought Lori was mirroring her. She told Gibb she had some special experiences with the Lord in the temple, and she may have mentioned Moroni at the time as well. She felt like Lori was like a sister in Christ, kind of a bond. So Melanie asked what she had been through and Lori said 
or I'm sorry, Melanie had asked Lori what she had been through. And Lori said, my kid was raped by her father. And Gibb tells detectives that was probably a lie. Lori was telling her all about these trials. And Gibb said they sounded genuine to her at the time. And Gibb says one of her weaknesses is she doesn't think people are manipulating her. So she thought Lori was telling the truth and that Lori also was really enlightened. So she said Lori told her she knows she's been called to be part of 144,000 and that Lori sealed her as his in the temple. The Lord said, sealed hers. <laughs> what did I say? That's said Lori. Lori. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Sorry, it probably happened too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, she probably sealed herself. <laughs> yes. Um, she says she knew she was called to gather other women. Uh, Gibb says where the deception really began. Lori and Gibb go to the temple and they're getting their white clothes on. And when she's finished, she stands in front of an arch window in the dressing room and feels a heat come over her head. And she wonders what that is. She tells Lori to feel her head. And Lori says, it's happening. Uh, dude, dude, Melanie Gibb was having a hot flash. That or they had the heat on in there. Speaking of hot cold. flashes, let's talk about our sponsor for the week real quick. We got Athletic Greens again. I'm going to tell you, I feel better taking this stuff. I've been on a solid month. Yeah. So I started AG1 because I wanted to start focusing on bettering my overall health. It's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat dairy free or gluten free or that keto, is it paleo? Paleo. It all, paleo. It also contains less than one gram of sugar. No GMOs, no nasty chemicals, nothing artificial. And I've been taking it the past couple of weeks, and I'm glad that I have. Uh, Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews, and it costs less than $3 a day, and it's an amazing investment for your health. Yeah, that's right. You're truly investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. If you're on the go a lot, you may feel sometimes your personal health is neglected. Taking AG1 is easy and simple on your normal everyday errands at home or even on vacation. I feel that by taking AG1, I'm choosing a better me and an overall better health. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water or smoothie or whatever, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash world. Again, it is athleticgreens.com slash world to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And do it, back, guys. Back to, back to the timeline we go. Pick it up, Fruit Loop. So she says they go into a couple of rooms and Lori thinks she has the power to ordain Gib to be a part of the 144,000. Lori says a prayer. Uh, Melanie said that's Lori's thing, a prayer. She said she got the keys to ordain her from Moroni and Jesus Christ. She said this while they were in the temple. She said that's where her confidence in Lori came in because she was in the temple and this happened to her. <laughs> that hot flash got to her, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Oh, so Lori told her a story of when she was living in Hawaii and she said an angel woke her up and told her, you need to email Julie Rowe and tell her she's a true servant. Um, Gib says she thinks Chad learned most of his energy work from Julie Rowe. And she's the one that brought all the emotion code stuff to the table. I'm, I'm really not sure about this emotion code stuff. But she said Chad and Julie worked together a whole lot. And Chad had been working with Suzanne Freeman and then kind of dumped her. If you remember, she wasn't comfortable with some of the things Chad was starting to do and didn't want to be associated. Um, the question is, is there a video of Chad twirling the little twirlies around? That's what dude, I I pay 50 bucks to watch that. Yeah, that'd be good. So he dumped... Freeman and went to Julie Rowe. And then of course, when Lori comes along, he dumps Julie Rowe goes to Lori. So they ask her to explain a little deeper about casting out spirits that comes in with Charles later, but she explains casting out spirits to the detective and says they would invite spirits to leave with their power or their prayers. 
and that Lori always initiated these casting out sessions and they referred to the spirit by name like Ned, Ned Schneider, which was supposedly the spirit and Charles. She said when Julie Clement got involved, they were at Lori's and doing a prayer and Julie and Zulema were doing energy work and Julie said she saw a dragon. And then of course, Zulema is like, I saw it too. Um, so Dude, that's then, on, what's that? What's that Disney movie with that little dragon on it? Oh, oh yeah. I was thinking about the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter, where they have to fight the dragons. No, I was thinking of that little red dragon. I can't think of the name of it. I, my kids are teenagers. I'm I'm lost on that Disney stuff, girl. I can't remember. So, what does Melanie say? Gibbs say? Uh, she said she was involved in around ten castings herself. Most of them were for Charles and maybe Tammy. At one casting out, they were in a circle holding hands. This was shortly after Charles was murdered. Zulema was into the elements as her power and Chad and Lori spoke. Melanie, Alex, and David Warwick were also there. She said the reason for this session was to talk the evil spirits out of the bodies, and she thinks this could have been about Tammy and maybe Brandon. Man. Gibb said eventually Lori would assign people jobs in this. Uh, Lori would close the casting by inviting the spirit to come out of the body. Her and Zulema would try and seal the spirit so it could leave forever. Lord have mercy. Um, so Gibb was asked by investigators if there was tension with Lori and Tylee, and she said, when was there not tension between them? She said from the first day she met Lori, she saw the tension. She said when she met Tylee, she introduced herself and said hi, and Tylee just didn't acknowledge her. Look, Tylee's a teenager. Her mom's got all these weird friends coming over. I'm sure Tylee was like, I am not even. Um, and then um, she also told a story to investigators of when they were at Schlotsky's Deli. You remember those Fruit Loop? We had those around here. They still have them. That's Dude, good really? Me. I thought yeah. they were gone. I have to find no, them tomorrow. No, they good. They good. Um, and she said she tried to, uh, Gibb said she tried to brush some hair off of Tylee's shoulder and Tylee kind of snapped at her. And Gibb said she didn't mind it, but it made Lori mad the way Tylee reacted to her. So October 19th, 2018, Lori tells people gathered at Gibbs house that she wanted to murder Joe Ryan around this time. Also is when Melanie starts spending a lot of time with Lori. So mistake. Hey, I remember the movie now it's Mulan. Mulan. It's, it's the little, little dragon. Mushu, Mushi, something. Yeah. Something. Oh yeah. That's so, it. Between October 27th, 2018 and November 1st, 2019, so we're jumping here, Chad, Chad's Google account shows a ton of searches, including Lori and Charles, Alex, Melanie, and also Arizona obituaries. I think the obituary search was to start coming up with names for this demon in Charles. Yeah. And I couldn't find specifically, but if you remember at one time, he said it was a childhood friend of Charles's who had died young. Yep. That had taken over his body. But anyways. So October 19th, 2018. This is when Lori gives her testimony at Gibbs house. And that's recorded on Lori's phone. This is the one where she talks about how she wanted to murder Joe Ryan. And she said, I was going to murder him. I was going to kill him like the scriptures say. Like Nephi killed just to stop the pain and to stop him coming after me. And to stop him coming after my children. I would go through the scriptures and find all the things. If he comes at you once, if he comes against you twice, if he comes against you three times, then you can kill him. It says in the scriptures, she said, I didn't have a murderous heart. I just wanted to stop the bleeding and stop the pain. I was like, I'm either going to turn my life to the temple or I'm going to commit murder. So on the ID special, we learned a few random facts. At some point, Lori was spending four to five hours at the temple every day. Uh, most go once a month or so. Uh, she was also shipping 30-day supplies of food to her family. Her nephew, Zach, who lived with them for a period of time, said Lori would say there are spirits around the house, and she got into an argument with the devil. Uh, Lori had started hanging out with these new friends in 2018, and it made him really uncomfortable. Well, yeah. Yeah, right? Uh, so Lori discusses turning her life over to the temple and killing her ex-husband, Joe Ryan, if her bishop did not give her a temple recommend. 
A temple recommend would authorize a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to enter the temple. In order to obtain a recommend, a baptized church member is interviewed by his or her bishop. During this interview, the member is asked a series of questions to determine worthiness to enter the temple. The individual is also interviewed by his or her stake president. A temple recommend can also be revoked or suspended for such things as adultery and other such sins. In reviewing Lori's iCloud accounts and speaking to those who knew her, the temple was extremely important to Lori. She would go daily and spend time in the celestial room where she felt she would communicate with those on the other side. And also, Chad and Lori believed regular temple visits increased their vibrations and ability to teleport. Yep. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying like oh, that. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get it. And, and we, you'll eventually see they just quit going. Yeah, because they're above because, it. Yeah, they're above it. And remember, she was hiding from Charles. Charles was trying to serve her yeah. before he was murdered. But, you know, you have to wonder, like, these temples that they know Lori and Zulema went into, I mean, I hope they did some kind of a thing in there to cleanse that temple of whatever hoodoo voodoo they brought in there. Because that's such a sacred spot. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the big event... October 26th. Oh, oh, no, no, no. You go ahead. So October 26th and 27th, Chad is in St. George, Utah as a speaker at a prepper gathering. And this is when Chad and Lori meet for the first time. It's been said they could have met as early as 2017. Melanie was with her at this conference. Shortly after their meeting, Chad begins Google searches on Lori, Charles, Alex, and Melanie. That's creepy. Yeah. So October 31st, 2018, Chad activates the Bubby phone, which we learn later is one of the contacts on the burner phones that Lori had for him using prepaid Cricket Wireless. The name he used was Boyd Dial. He gets all the dumbest names. Chad Dayball. Calling the mortuary. Boyd Dial. With a P.O. box in Mesa, Arizona. And the phone was actually active only from July 1st, 2019 to October 8th, 2019, which actually that's in the time frame that Charles was murdered. Um, so Lori entered this number into her contact list on July 2nd, 2019, which is the day after he activates it. And it seems they used this phone to communicate only after Charles discovered the affair, which we think was on June 29th of 2019. So, um, do you, let's see, I think we can go and we'll finish this page and we'll be done. November 3rd, 2018, the first time Lori and Zulema discuss harming Charles. The same day, Zulema tells Lori she was told by God she, that she is her protector. She is to protect Lori. So, November 16th, 17th, 2018, Chad speaks at an event in Mesa, Arizona, which is another prepper event. And this is the second time he meets Lori. This is when he stays at the house that Lori shared with Charles. This is the one I think we, we have all the cookies in the picture and all that. And also, I wonder if this isn't the time that the nephew, uh, Zach Cox, said he came home and saw 30 and 40 cars. And he walked in and heard a voice and saw Chad talking and he said it freaked him out. He, uh, this is also the event where we saw the, the big photo of everybody holding up the cookies. Yeah. So someone who attended that meeting said she invited Chad, Lori, and Gib to stay in her home while her husband and kids were out of town. And she said she walked in and Chad and Lori were discussing where they were going to sleep that night. Chad said he was planning on sleeping in Lori's room, but she said he seemed really nervous. So I got confused there. It seems like either they stayed at Lori and Charles's or maybe they spent another night somewhere. I'm not sure. If you guys know, let us know in comments. But that he was concerned someone would see him at the house, even though he would be in the bedroom. So yeah, I that, think that's the same time Melanie Gibb talks about it that they would go running or something. Yeah, or walking in the mornings or something. Can you see Chad running? No, come on, not man. at that time. No, like I ain't making fun of nobody, but he don't look like a runner. If I'm running, you better run too. Something chasing you. Yep, something behind me. Yeah, if you run it, I'm just tripping you up. Mm. <laughs> but, any, <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to stop here because we're trying to stop at points where we don't get kind of like a quarter way through something important and then stop. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Oh, Lord. Um, my lung just went that way. So anyways, um, we'll be back tomorrow with another episode. We're going to pick right up. As far as the Wagner case, there really just wasn't anything new. Um, I listened to that last episode to see what we had missed. I mean, right now, actually, July 5th through the 8th, they were in jury selection, like the questionnaire part. That picks back up around the second week of August. And then trial at the end of the month. So we really haven't, we kind of covered it in that last episode. So this week, unless something crazy happens, we all up in the Valo Daybell drama. And uh, again, we're thinking about Charles and those who knew and loved him today. Very sad day, I'm sure, on a lot of levels. So we will see you guys soon. Take care. <laughs>